Bassett, your New England Sports Network. Live from Oakland, Alameda County Coliseum, the New England Sports Network presents exclusive coverage of Red Sox baseball. This afternoon, the Boston Red Sox take on the Oakland A's. Brought to you in part by Polaroid Spectra System. We take your pictures seriously. By Nissan, who invites you to test drive the totally new 1987 Nissan Stanza at your Nissan dealer now. By Sullivan Tires, your family car care center. By Budweiser. Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. And by your Mass Chevy dealer. The place to get the truck deal of a lifetime. Good afternoon, everybody, from Oakland, Alameda County Coliseum. I'm Ned Martin, along with Bob Montgomery. The Red Sox try to win one here against the Oakland Athletics in game two of their three-game set. They have a job to do today because they're up against one of the foremost pitchers for the athletics. A guy who's had trouble with uh, uh, the uh, DL this year, Joaquin Andujar, who already has beaten the Red Sox once. And a very nice matchup, Marty, with Tom Seaver going for Boston. Well, for now, former National League, as we were talking about last night, the former National League greats, uh, if you want to look at it from that aspect. One thing that may be in uh, Andahar's favor, of course, his injury on the disabled is what had nothing to do with his arm. It was a simple leg injury. One thing the Red Sox would like to do today is get some runs for Tom Seaver. His last two starts have seen him get no runs and then one earn earn run. So they would be well to do something about that, but then Andahar is the one you have to do that off of. Could be a low-scoring ball game. And he only got one run off him last time at Fenway Park. We'll have the starting lineups right after this. Okay, the starting lineups. The first one for the Boston Red Sox this afternoon. A few changes here and there because of a right-handed pitcher going instead of last night's left-hander. Marty Barrett will be at second base. Wade Boggs at third. Bill Buckner, the hitter. Don Baylor in left field. Dwight Evans in right. Rich Gedman catching. Mike Stenhouse at first base. Ray Canonis at shortstop. And Lachelle Tarver in center field. The umpiring crew will be John Hirschbeck calling the balls and strikes, Tim Toshida at first base, crew chief Nick Bremigan at second, and Rocky Rowe calling the plays at third. Beautiful afternoon in Oakland. And a little swirling breeze, but very pleasant, as out on the mound for the athletics, the veteran Joaquin Andujar. And veteran indeed. He pitches certainly like a veteran over and over and over again. He's kind of a come right at you type pitcher. He'll give you a lot of velocity, a lot of good velocity, pretty good control. Not afraid to uh, get his share of the plate on the outside corner either. Five wins, two losses. This will be his second start since coming back off the disabled list with that hamstring pull. And in a simulated game, hurt an ankle that set the re comeback time back even a little bit farther. 3.42 earned run average. So be start number 12 for the right-hander overall. And talking about a pitcher being really missed from a starting rotation or a staff, the fact that Andahar has but 50 innings of work this year will give you a little bit of an idea of what the Oakland A's have missed with him out of there. Certainly, you think about this time of the year, you're talking about a starting pitcher who gets the ball and answers the call on a regular basis. He should be somewhere around 130 to 35 innings by now. Well, that's why they got him, too. They wanted him to be the ace of the staff, and he certainly could have been without an injury. The two 20-game winning seasons in a row behind him in the National League for the Cardinals. Traded him over here for catcher Mike Heath, and he beat the Red Sox at Fenway Park. A very strong performance in May before going on the disabled list. He is one of the few people out of San Pedro de Macari who is not a shortstop. 
from that the Dominican has, Republic. Had to have somebody for those guys to catch it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Marty Barrett standing in. Barrett hitting 288. And the first pitch is ball one. We're underway at Oakland. Barrett with a couple of home runs and 28 runs batted in. Joaquin is high for a ball. The count is two and nothing. Andujar, 33 years old. Six feet, 190 pounds. Tim Conroy, of course, another pitcher went over to, along with Heath, to the Cardinals in that winter deal. There's a strike snapped across the outside corner. Last year with St. Louis, Andujar won 21, lost 12. The year before, he was 20 and 14. Owen won in the league championship series last year with the Dodgers. Right side and right to Bruce Bakhti, the first baseman. Barrett is out. There's one away. Bakhti at first base, Phillips at second, Griffin at short, and Lansford at third in the infield for the A's. Jerry Willard catching today. Conseco, Murphy, and Mike Davis left to right in the outfield. Wade Boggs. 361 average. Boggs went 0 for 3 last night and was called out on strikes his last time up in the ninth inning against Kurt Young. Strike one. Boggs has five home runs, 44 batted in. Lining foul down the left field side. And a catch in the crowd. Nothing and two. Boggs still leading the major leagues in average and on base percentage. ball knocks Wade back off the plate and it's one ball two strikes last start for Andujar a win over Milwaukee six to one his first is coming off the list little chopper and Joaquin will field it holy mackerel Bruce Bakhti about 30 feet away took a 90 mile an hour fastball. He threw it to Bakhti a lot harder than he threw it to Boggs. <laughs> he did that. <laughs> Bruce, be ready over there. That's right. He's Boy. checking to make sure all the teeth are still there. <laughs> and I really went back to that rosin bag. Really got rosin up like he was going to turn one loose. Got the change up to Boggs and got him out in front and then fired the heater to his first baseman. Bakhti's head snapped back on that one. <laughs> It's like uh, Doc Ellis used to throw to the That's plate right. when he came in. Doc wanted to change balls. You got his best, <laughs> best velocity. One strike, the count to Buckner, Bill Buckner, the designated hitter. Hitting 253 with 10 home runs and 53 runs batted in. Fly ball hit pretty well to center field. Murphy back and can't get it. Takes it on one hop. Buckner into second base with a stand-up double. Ball well stroked to center by Bill Buckner. A two-out double. Well, right away, you see the difference in the way the ball carries in this ballpark in the daytime. The last night, we saw a couple of strong right-handed hitters really drive balls into this area last night. And the outfielders, although they had to drop back and make some run for them, were there pretty much waiting. Not this time. Murphy was going as hard as he could go. Still has that ball over his head. And Buckner has his 22nd double, and I'm going to assure you that at least half of those are the toughest doubles in the world. <laughs> That's right. I mean, he has to struggle to get to second base. Nowadays, he's still bothered with the ankle. Don Baylor is the batter, hitting 241, playing left field again. 
Little tapper to shortstop Griffin. Retires Baylor, a little spinning ball. And that is all for the Red Sox in the first inning. They have no runs. They have a hit. And they leave one. And after a half inning of play, it is Boston nothing. And Oakland coming to bat. The Athletics will hit like this today. Tony Phillips will be at second base. Dwayne Murphy in center field. Jose Canseco in left field. Bruce Bakhti at first base. Dave Kingman, the designated hitter. Carney Lansford at third base. Mike Davis in right field. Jerry Willard, the catcher. And Alfredo Griffin at shortstop. And that lineup will take the field against Tom Seaver. Certainly a, a lineup that has to be dealt with for a couple of different reasons, those power hitters in there. And also the fact that most of their hitters, as opposed to the Red Sox hitters, the Oakland A's hitters are healthy. So that's a little something else that Seaver would have to be dealing with as opposed to Andahar. Seaver making his fifth start in a Red Sox uniform. And after coming to Boston, he's worked to a two win and one loss record. Going 32, giving up 32 hits in 26 and two thirds, but very strong in the base on balls and strikeouts department. He's about three to one there. He's walked five, striking out 16, and he's given up two home runs. This Oakland uh, lineup, as I was mentioning, healthy. They are strong, they are speedy, but they also have a group of hitters in that lineup that can very much be pitched to. So a controlled type pitcher and an experienced pitcher like Seaver could certainly use a lot of that to his advantage, especially the power guys like a Canseco and a Kingman. You do have to remember, though, if you make one little mistake, either one of those two guys, along with a couple of others, can really uh, hurt your attitude. <laughs> <laughs> Seaver pitched as well as any of the Red Sox pitchers up in Seattle, actually. He pitched a tough ball game. Leaving the game tied up 1-1, he got out of a numerous amount of jams in Seattle. He was no decision in that. He went six innings and gave up seven hits in one run, walked two and struck out five against the Mariners. The first man up, Tony Phillips, takes a strike. Phillips at 258. Five home runs, 40 batted in. And a one ball, one strike count to the switch hitting second baseman. Phillips had a home run last night. Batting right handed against Bruce Hurst. He went one for three officially, walked once. Well stretched out in a crouch. Down to Barrett at second. One out. So Phillips is gone and Murphy comes in. Dwayne Murphy batted in the number seven spot last night against the left handed Hurst starting. He's up in the number two position and hitting 256. Three home runs, 18 batted in. And Murphy had a hit last night to drive in a run. One for three for him. In the dirt for ball one. Beautiful day for this 12-15 start Oakland time. About 70 degrees. They've been working on this a uh, couple of day games here and there at this time during this year. They have a promotion tomorrow. I don't believe there's any today. Do you think so? I don't know that. I know they're working on some of these games, as you said. They try to do. I was talking to Mickey Mirabito. The public relations man here for the Oakland A's. They do not have a big advanced sale here because of the size of the ballpark, which is a little bit understandable. Come to this ballpark and buy a ticket anytime you want to. So they, they try to uh, help some of the, especially in the summertime, middle of the summer when the kids are out of school, they help promote some of that uh, daytime baseball. Foul on the 3-1 pitch. It's now 3-2 and two to Murphy. Well, I kind of liked it, as a matter of fact. Well, as we, we witnessed last night, it was quite cool in this ballpark, and it is on a number of occasions, even though we're in July. So it gives their, the Oakland A's fans a chance to come to the ballpark when it's going to be a beautiful day, which they have a lot of here anyway. Almost uh, a perfect day. 3-2 from Seaver to Murphy, and ball four. 
I think the players probably like them too. You don't necessarily like the quick day game after the, the night game like last night. But in Boston, when we would have the Wednesday afternoon or Thursday afternoon games, it was like having a day and a half off or a full day off. All right. And uh, two games in the daytime following each other makes it a little more, bit more normal. Jose Canseco, the left fielder, hitting 265 with 23 home runs and 78 batted in. Seaver checking over there with Dwayne Murphy. Red Sox held Canseco to 0 for 4 last night. Struck him out twice. But he is one that you talk about. With the home run swing and the strikeout swing almost identical depending on where you put the ball tight to him for a ball one ball no strikes He's taking some extra batting practice today I'd say for a good solid 15 minutes maybe more and had Ron Plaza the third base coach of the A's throwing batting practice to him with almost all breaking balls curveball sliders foul back well that's what he any rookie that swings like that you have to start working on people will work on him that way but he is so dangerous up there. One swing and he can unload the ball game on you. Hmm. 11 hits in his last 40 at bats, and, but out of those 11 hits, five have been home runs against Boston. That's against Boston pitching this year, five home runs, none last night. And there's a good breaking pitch on that outside corner. All one ball and two strikes. All the batting practice in the world on breaking balls won't heal this one. <laughs> that is just perfectly thrown. One ball, two strikes. Looped out into shallow center, back of second base, actually, and Quinones has it for the out. Seaver staying away from Canseco after going into him to start him off. Pops up to shortstop. There are two away. Now Bruce Bakhti, the first baseman, is up. Bruce hitting 262 with five home runs and 24 batted in. Did not play last night with Hurst starting. Bruce Hurst felt pretty good today. He said he did it really didn't feel that he had uh, he was very short on his fastball. He thought he knew he'd be a little short but he didn't feel that he'd be that short. And of course uh, the breaking stuff will come too but I think he was encouraged. Well simply because that leg didn't bother him uh, if anything else and if he is not that sore today then that's a good sign. He was about three miles an hour under normal for him. He'll be around 86 to 87, sometimes a little quicker than that. Last night he was about 82 and 83, but then of course minus that curveball. Yeah. Into the hole in left field for a base hit for Bakhti. Ball bobbled a bit by Baylor, but no advance. Bruce Bakhti, who likes to hit a lot that way, goes to left field singling and sending Murphy to second. Dave Kingman will be up. Bakhti at first, Murphy at second. Two outs in the first inning of a scoreless game. And two former Mets going against each other. Seaver and Kingman. Kingman is hitting at 204, but he has 22 home runs. 61 runs driven in. Had a homer last night. Breaking pitch, ball one. Jesse Barfield and Canseco are tied for the lead, along with Mike Pajarulo of uh, New York, for home runs in the American League with 23. Kingman has 22, tied with George Bell of Toronto. Of course, the second spot. One ball, one strike. Kent Herbeck of Minnesota, 21. So does uh, Lance Parrish of Detroit have 21.
Canseco all by himself and runs batted in leading the majors there and the American League by four over George Bell who is creeping up though and Wally Joyner third at 73 runs batted in the ball behind Gedman and the runners move up Murphy goes to third and Bakhti to second Tom maybe hung on to the breaking ball a little more, just kind of swung it to the outside part. Gedman couldn't get the glove to the backhand. Try to keep the palm of the glove up, had it go off the glove all the way. That's pretty good ways from this plate to the backstop if it doesn't go off onto the angles, off to the wings. <laughs> a bit of a jaunt back there. You would know. Yeah, I was there a few times. <laughs> <laughs> There's a line drive base hit to center field. And the wild pitch is going to cost two runs. Two nothing Oakland. Dave Kingman singling sharply in the center. Scoring Murphy and Bakhti. Oh, right down in Kingman's living room, too. Of course, you don't have an awful lot of options there. Certainly, Seaver didn't want to hang it or set it right in the middle of the plate for him. Kingman hung it out to dry. Quickly, Oakland breaks on top two to nothing. And that's what the Red Sox didn't want to see happen. They got a one nothing lead last night in the second inning. Runner going down the second base. The throw goes into center field. Kingman picks himself up and trots the third. Dave Kingman doesn't do that often. Gets a stolen base. There'll be an error on the throw by Gedman. Well, Kingman's trying to become an all-around player here in the latter part of his career. Tried to bunt his way on last night. Was thrown out on a good play. And on that one, he just took off. Nobody paid any attention to him. And he'll get up and hustle it on the third. Stolen base for him. That's his second stolen base of the year. Not unique. Here's Carney Lansford taking ball one. Kingman at third. Two outs. Two runs in. Stolen base for Kingman. Error on Gedman on the throw. Three balls, no strikes. Red Sox had one error last night. But as noted, they have been making a lot more than their share last couple of weeks before and after the break there's a strike to Lansford Lansford hitting 289 foul ball seven home runs and 34 runs driven in for Carney Continued his hot hitting against his old ball club with a three for three night last night. Two singles and a triple. Drive to left field deep. Baylor back. It's against the wall for another run. And Lansford goes into second. He's got a double. And they're running at Seaver now. Carney Lansford continues his heavy hitting against the Red Sox, doubling to left. Three to nothing, Oakland. Oh, really a rocket. He just got, he has just zeroed in on that A's logo out on the left field wall. We were trying to run that ball in on Carney's hands, and Carney wouldn't let him get in there. Got off the apostrophe, I think. <laughs> Slowly hit to the right side by Davis, and Barrett throws Mike Davis out. Davis, the right fielder. First ball hitting is thrown out. The inning finally ends for Seaver. Who gives up three runs on three hits and they leave one. And after one inning of play, it's Oakland three and Boston nothing. Now a message from your mass Chevy dealers, the place to get the truck deal of a lifetime. Manager John McNamara coming upon hard times lately with the injuries to his club and 
kind of a, uh, a so-so finish before the All-Star break and a poor beginning in Seattle. Sees his team down 3-0 already in the second game of this three-game set against Oakland, a last-place club in the American League West. There was a statement by the American League today. Dr. Bobby Brown, the president of the American League, announced today the fine and suspension of Oakland A's pitcher Dave Stewart. That was actually last night. That's as a result of a fight between Stewart and Cleveland Indian manager Pat Corrales on July 1st at Oakland Coliseum right here. Stewart has been fined $500 and suspended for a period of four games. However, Stewart has appealed Dr. Brown's decision, and pending the results of that appeal, Stewart's suspension has been postponed. Pat Corrales was also fined $500 and has been suspended for four games. Corrales started uh, serving his suspension already, but since Stewart is appealing, he can go to until the appeal comes up later in the month or sometime in August, maybe. So he will pitch tomorrow afternoon's game here. He will be the starting pitcher against the Red Sox. That was uh, the big fight that was started when Corrales came out. Stewart met him at the third baseline. Corrales gave him a karate kick, and Stewart decked him with a right. Dwight Evans up. His homer averted a shutout last night, his 13th home run of the year. He's hitting 263 with 63 runs batted in. Two and nothing. Evans has hit in five straight games, going nine for 19. He's had two homers and nine runs batted in his last four games. Cracks it towards short. Griffin. A little hesitation, but gets in nicely. Evans can't get it by Griffin in this series. He made a great play last night toward the hole and in to get Evans on sheer robbery. This was not quite as difficult. White's going to have to try somebody else in that infield. I think Griffin's pretty much shown him that he can make the play on him any way he has to go at one extra step to watch Griffin a lot in this series. He'll take that ball and drop it from that glove into his bare hand. That time he kind of flipped it from the glove into the throwing hand. Rich Gedman up. Lines it towards center. Dwayne Murphy stabs it. Ball was sailing. Hit hard by Gedman. Murphy staying with it, going to his right and snagging it up in the backhand. I think that ball just starting to realize how hard it was hit just before it got to Murphy and was really kind of starting to get a little extra on it. Oops, there's a little bit of a lunge. That last long stride got the job done, though, for the center fielder. Two down quickly for the Red Sox in the second. They trail three to nothing. And Mike Stenhouse is the batter, playing first base today. Ball high. Mike, two hits and 15 times up. Most of those times up as a pinch hitter, and his walks have been gathered. Ten walks this season gathered as, as a pinch hitter, most part. He lifts one to left center field and is going to be taken by the left fielder, Conseco. Senhouse flies to left. One, two, three for Andujar. And we go to the bottom of the second inning with Oakland leading three to nothing. Now a message from Sullivan Tire Family Car Care Centers. At Sullivan Tire, you'll be treated with our family spirit because that's what Sullivan Tire is all about. In the top, or the bottom of inning number two, Oakland leading three to nothing. It'll be Jerry Willard leading off. He'll be followed by Alfredo Griffin. And then the top of the order, Tony Phillips. Willard hitting 281. Willard used to be with the Cleveland Indians. He opened last year with them. The Californian, who last year with Cleveland hit 270 in 300 at bats and 39 ball in uh, 104 games. Played with the main guides. Willard hitting 281.
and looking at Seaver's pitch for a ball three count. Willard began his career in the Philadelphia Phillies organization, signed first with them. There's a strike to him, three and one. Got his first two major league homers in the same game at Fenway Park. Back in 82, when he was playing with Cleveland. And he walks. <laughs> Willard draws a walk to open things in the second for Oakland. The second walk given up by Seaver. <laughs> Alfredo Griffin, the shortstop, batting ninth, hitting 289, couple of home runs, 28 batted in. Alfredo is uh, lithe and wiry, but he's played in 268 straight games, counting this one. He has a six-game hitting streak going right now. Butts, Boggs, gets him over to Stenhouse. Nice play by Wade, playing it with the bare hand. The sacrifice given to Griffin. Willard goes to second. Oh, what a honey. Alfredo just shoots it right down that third base side. Already a step out of the box. And a head start on Boggs in that department. But a good play by Wade. Bare hand at all. Actually, Alfredo couldn't lose with that effort, could he? Not hardly. Base hit or no at bat. <laughs> Runner at second base with one out. And the top of the order coming up. Tony Phillips. Lines it toward right, but here comes Evans and Dwight with a shoulder high catch. Making it out number two. Willard holding it second. Two down, that's right. And Dwayne Murphy coming up. Murphy walked and scored a run in the first inning. One of the three scored by the A's. Three of the runs were earned in that inning. Despite a throwing error by Gedman, it was just a base advancing error, and the ensuing double by Lansford would have scored Kingman from second anyway. Nothing and one the count to Murph. High toward right field, deep, and Evans back. At the track makes the catch for the final out. No runs and one left. After two innings of play here, it's Oakland three and Boston nothing. This copyrighted program is brought to you under pay cable TV rights granted by the Boston Red Sox solely for the entertainment of our viewing audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of the accounts and descriptions of this game without the written consent of the New England Sports Network and the Red Sox is prohibited. Got the top of the third coming up at the Coliseum with the Red Sox trailing three to nothing. And Canonis, Tarver, and Barrett will be up. One helpful thing for the Red Sox is the fact that Jim Rice is walking a little better today. Came out of the ballpark with you, didn't he? How's his knee? He, he could be hitting, or he was hitting during uh, batting practice today. He tried to shag yesterday afternoon. He just simply can't run on it anymore. He's walking a lot better. He has more uh, flexibility in it where he can bend it. Ray Canonis is up. Canonis hitting 247, two home runs, 15 runs batted in. And a strike from Andohar. Last night's game, Canonis went 0 for 3, walked once. A good wicked breaking pitch for a strike in the outside corner. Nothing in two.
can sit on that outside corner on Canonis there. One ball, two strikes. The last time he got all rosin up like that, it was a changeup to Boggs. Oops. Not that time. <laughs> Not that time. That's right. <laughs> ball two. It's a 2-2 count to Canonis. Andujar, a guy that kind of marches to his own drummer. Red Sox were offered Joaquin, you might remember, over the winter. And three other players. There's a ball outside. Three and two to Canonis. Joaquin may be yelling into plate umpire. Where was it? <laughs> well, sure had the it had the plate. I don't That's know about the pitch. height or not. Full count, three and two to Ray Canonis. Goes to second base, Phillips. And Canonis is out. One down in the top of the third. Red Sox have had one hit so far. A double, two out double by Bill Buckner in the first inning. Okay. Oakland leading three to nothing. Lachelle Tarver. Tarver, the center fielder. Two hits and 15 times up for him since coming up from Pawtucket. And he takes a fastball high for a ball. Tarver did not play last night. Uh, Romine played center field and got a hit. Well, he pulls the ball, and Bakhti has it at first. They played Tarver way over to left field, and left fielder usually sits on the line. They did in Seattle. Canseco was tired the line there. This time, Michelle got a ball he could handle to the right side, but right at the first baseman. There are two down. Marty Barrett grounded to Bakhti in the first. Had a single in last night's game, then was cut down trying to steal. Outfield, which was to left on Tarver, moves around toward right on Barrett. And he lines to left. Coming in quickly is Conseco. Barrett takes the turn and holds as Conseco fires into the cutoff man, Griffin. Barrett has his first hit on the second Red Sox hit, a two-out single. Joaquin drops down to the side. He wants to get that ball to the outside part of the plate. It just hangs right inside for Marty. Marty quickly fired those hips out of there, and the baseball is right behind it. Want to see a P? <laughs> that just kept right on going right there. You would have seen one. <laughs> <laughs> he threw to Griffin about like Andujar threw to Bakhti in the Ooh. first inning. Here's Wade Boggs. Boggs bounced out to Andujar. Fouls it off, strike one. I think it helps those infielders. They, they make a, they certainly be aware of that. The strong throwing arm of a Canseco, Murphy with a good strong throwing arm in center field, Davis, all those outfielders, they do not have to go out as far in that outfield to become cutoff men because those throws get to them much quicker. And that just makes the, the relay play on any kind of gapper anywhere a little more effective as far as this Oakland club is concerned. Griffin, of course, with a very strong throwing arm, and he would be the one that would handle most of the cutoff playing. His speed would allow him to get to the right side to take balls out of the right center field gap. To Boggs and the foul. One and two. Boggs up there now, and Canseco is way over toward the line and left. About where he played Tarver, only deeper. And Murphy, the side saddle center fielder, facing the left field line, playing in left center. You see where they give Boggs the entire right field line area. Davis moved over to right center. Keep working him out there. Two and two. Where a hitter sometimes can help himself, and Boggs certainly 
will do that. He'll look around and check those outfielders. He's going to know that if they throw anything that's in on him, it's going to be in where he can't reach it. And the heart did it earlier, almost knocked him down. To make a mistake, and Wade could run for a while if he got one out there in the right field. Got one over out over the inner half of the plate. That's something you could handle. Down to second, and Phillips with a momentary bobble throws Boggs out. And that is the end of the inning. No runs, one hit, and one left. And after two and a half innings, Oakland three and Boston nothing. And now a message from your mass Chevy dealers, the place to get the truck deal of a lifetime. Bottom of the third inning at Oakland, with the A's leading the Red Sox three to nothing. And their meat of the order coming up against Tom Seaver, Conseco, Bakhti, and Kingman. Third, fourth, and fifth hitters. Jose Conseco popped a shortstop in the first. He's bluffing the bunt and taking way outside past everybody ball one. Drops the bunt to Seaver. Wasn't fooling the first time either. Canseco trying something different bunts out to Tom Seaver. So there's one down, and then just as you say, Kingman can do that all afternoon or all night. So can Seiko, as far as you're concerned, give him four bunts. You bet. Say thank you after each one. Here's Bakhti. Taking high for a ball. Bruce singled and scored in the first. Jose Canseco, you can see maybe why he was trying to bunt that time, Monty. He's 0 for 17. He's 0 for his last 17. Maybe he's trying to do something to get started again. Oh, run would serve the same purpose, wouldn't it? <laughs> that, that would help you get started. Down wide of first, taken by Stenhouse, over to Seaver. And there are two down. Bakhti grounding out 3-1. to one. So Stenhouse and Seaver have combined on a couple of plays here in the third inning. Two down, nobody on, and Kingman is up. Dave came up with runners at second and third and drilled a single to center field, scoring them both in the first inning. Three infielders on the left side again. He will hit into that shift most of the time. He does this time two to Boggs. One, two, three inning for Seaver, all on the ground. And after three innings of play here, Oakland three, Boston nothing. At the end of three, the Oakland A's with a three-run first inning lead in this game with three runs, three hits, and no errors. The Red Sox, no runs, two hits, and one error. Three runs are earned as Joaquin Andahar has said things pretty much his way, Monty. And uh, you'd expect no difference. You've got to get some people on base and uh, get a loud thump somewhere. He doesn't allow many of those, that's for sure. At least he hasn't to Boston batters this year. He hasn't allowed a lot of them in the last couple of years. He's won 41 games over those last two years. Actually, 46 now, counting his five into this third season of that. Buckner, one of the two Red Sox hits. He had a sharp double over the glove. Uh, Murphy out in left center field his first time up. That's as far as he has gotten, and that's the only sniff that the Red Sox have had of a run, the only possibility. They did have Barrett on with a single, but he stayed right at first. Lifted to center once again by Buckner. Murphy dropping back near the edge of the warning track. Calls it in, one away. Another interesting note about Andujar and his career 
in the big leagues which started back in 1976 with the Astros. This man over in over 1900 innings has never given up a grand slam. That's amazing. Isn't that something. Here's Baylor up. Not sure how many times he would have had opportunities the way he's pitched the last couple of years. He just doesn't give you that many base runners. Right now, Andahar leader three to nothing over the Red Sox in the top of the fourth inning. Nobody on, a man down for Don Baylor. Andahar got right on his hands to retire him on a soft roller to actually a soft liner than a one hopper to Griffin at short in the first. <laughs> Fastball actually seemed to start off the plate and then tail right back on the outer third. Baylor even now in the count two and two. That's the tail on it. Once again, and Hart trying to go outside as he drops down and comes around by third and didn't quite get it there. And Baylor pull it foul. Second time around in this West Coast swing, certainly a different one. First five games as the Red Sox started before the All-Star break, they were five and zero through Seattle and Oakland. First five games in this one, however, they are one and four. Roger Clemens start in Seattle. That pitch just misses outside, and it's a full count to Baylor. Red Sox playing ball clubs that are a lot different, not makeup wise necessarily, although the A's have quite a few of their players back off that injured list. Baylor on a soft line drive to right field to have the third Red Sox hit. So the Red Sox have caught the A's in that department. However, still trail three to nothing. Don't often see Don Baylor going to right field. He did on this one, though. Kind of almost an inside-out swing for him. Plops it out there. And for the first time in the game, the Red Sox have a hit with less than two out. Seems to be deliberate at that swing. He looked like he had an ID. He wanted to go that way, and it's just the way he went. So Donnie will stand at first for Dwight Evans. One down, Evans out of a roller to Alfredo Griffin. Dewey hit his 13th homer last night here to deep left center field. Just past the 375 mark. Quick throw by Andujar there. Baylor just back safely. And that one gets away from Bucky Baylor up and he will move to second base. So the Red Sox have had their second man back there now. And Andohar will be charged with the error. Red Sox catch a break here. The ball in the dirt by Andohar off the glove of Bakhti. Baylor finally sees it out there and just keeps his eye on it. Make sure that he has plenty of time to get down to second base on the throwing error. Strike poured over by Andujar. Dwight's homer last night, the first one he's hit off a left-handed pitcher all season long. Red Sox, of course, as you know, and we mentioned from time to time, a little more difficulty offensively against left-handed pitching. Tenders have beaten Red Sox 13 times this year. Red Sox have won 12 against left handers. Of course, that's a combination of starters and relievers and both wins and losses. There's the breaking ball. It gets that outside corner, and it's one and two. Andahar, for the most part today, is doing something that's a little hard for any hitter, right-handed or left-handed, to adjust to. He's making that ball move 
different directions. He has it going in on the right-hander with the running fastball, not so much of a sinker. And then, of course, that good sharp slider changes directions. There it is. Evans reached for it once again to Griffin at short. And that's out number two. Well, it's a question of a hitter being able to pick the spot, pick the pitch. Maybe have to guess a little bit to say, well, is he going to give me a chance to run it, run it in on me, or do I have to look away? Baylor had to hold his ground at second with two down. That'll bring up Rich Gedman. Red Sox playing a couple of hot clubs, too. The Mariners had won five in a row in the Dome when they had come in, when the Red Sox had gone in there. The A's have won six of their last seven games. They won lost. six of their last seven, and they've done a good job under Tony La Russa, and they're already writing into the paper asking for Billy Martin to come back. <laughs> the fans here. Uh... Tony La Russa. He played to a seven and five mark under La Russa since he's taken over. Gedman again, this time deep to center field. Murphy going back. He'll watch this one. Touch them all, Getty. A two run homer for Gedman, and the Red Sox pull within one. Ooh. As deep as you can get in this ballpark, well over 400 feet for Gedman's sixth homer of the year. It's three to two, Oakland. First Red Sox player, first player ever to hit one out there in this ballpark when they came in here was Carl Yastrzemski hit one out in that area, and Gedman duplicated that here. Stenhouse with a deep fly ball to right center field, Murphy dropping back. Oh, he's there as he glides in the middle of the warning track to haul that one in. But the Red Sox score. They get a couple of runs on two hits. The big one, the sixth homer of the year by Rich Gedman. And after three and a half, Boston trails Oakland three to two. And now a message from Sullivan Tire Family Car Care Centers. At Sullivan Tire, you'll be treated with our family spirit because that's what Sullivan Tire is all about. Rich Gedman gets two back for his battery mate very quickly on this pitch. The ball tails right out over the heart of the plate, and Gedman's swing sends it well over 400 feet away. Murphy knew it. Time he got there, no chance at it. Just admire that as it goes over for a two-run homer for Gedman. Flying away into that runway out there. 3-2. Pretty good shot by Gedman. That ball not only over the 400-foot mark, it was 400-plus over that mark. Oh, Gedman has his teammates right back in it. Seaver to work to Lansford here, leading off the A's fourth inning. Lansford, an RBI double in the Oakland first. Oakland's three runs all coming in inning number one. Carney will be followed by Mike Davis and Jerry Willard. Receiver off the mark outside. Two and one. John McNamara and oh, he almost must get at least six innings out of Seaver today. He doesn't really have an option. Stewart gone to Los Angeles to be examined by Dr. Yoakum, affiliated uh, with Dr. Job around that Los Angeles Dodger team for so many years. Grounder to Boggs left. Lansford is out. One away. Calvin Chiraldi has worked two plus innings two days in a row. Last day in Seattle last night. So he's pretty much down and Stanley you wouldn't use much before the seventh inning anyway. Unless it became an absolute emergency. 
Lala got up last night but didn't come in the pitch to the other one early. On the other side of the coin, the A's carry five pitchers. Will make that six. And they're all pretty healthy. They've had to do that because of unhealthy pitchers throughout the course of this year. And one thing that helps Tony LaRusso do that and carry four extra men is that he has some switch hitters. Donnie Hill, who was active last night in the infield, sits on that bench to work either left-handed or right-handed as a pinch hitter. So does Mickey Tettleton, last night's starting catcher. Breaking ball in the back door to Mike Davis, and it's a ball and two-strike count. Plus, Donnie Hill can play a number of positions at, in that infield, so that alleviates another man. That's, as we've talked about so many times, a requirement now with the one less player on your roster. It's 24 instead of 25. The 23rd and 24th man has to be somewhat versatile. Mm, a little smoke there from Tom, but doesn't find the strike zone, and we're even at two and two. To the right side, bouncing. Stenhouse is there. Underhand flip to Seaver just in time. And that's out number two. Did Tom catch a spike? Had a quick look at it, but I don't see a limp there. Stenhouse flipping the toss to Seaver, and they got it just by a half step. Now, I don't believe he caught it that much of it, if he caught any at all. Tom did get that right foot right in the middle of that bag. Pitchers like to get themselves so they can run along that line side by side and get the inside corner to stay away from that very thing happening. Jerry Willard, the hitter, nobody on, two down for the A's catcher. He drew a walk leading off the second inning. Boston trailing three to two as we play in the bottom of inning number four. Other than the Chicago Cubs, who just got underway at Wrigley, the only two ball games going on in the country right now. Everything, both American and National League, slated for night action. San Diego did not score in the top of the first inning at Wrigley. There's the tailing fastball. Just gets the outside corner and then runs away. And it's two and two. You see a little movement on some Seaver pitches, much as you will from Andahar. Especially to the left-hander. Threw it right in the target. Getty, Getty must have been set up out of the strike zone. <laughs> Hardly had to move the glove, but he was outside. <laughs> Here's the payoff. Well, no, we'll start it back over again. See where it started and then stopped. He uses that once in a while, too. He'll stop, almost pause in his windup, and then continue through with it. A little double pump. Foul toward the Red Sox bullpen. To the right side, Marty Barrett. Stenhouse, that's it for the A's in the fourth. Seaver now has retired nine open batters in a row. We go to inning number five, and the A's lead three to two. Time I think about that cruise, and I think about that softball game, I have to wonder how you can play a softball game on a cruise liner Kind of reminds me of the statement made by Bill Lee a couple of years ago when the California Angels had the 
types of hitters like a Jerry Remy, a Mickey Rivers. He made the statement. At that time, that team being managed by Dick Williams said they could take batting practice in the lobby of the Boston Sheridan. <laughs> they didn't need to tear up the ballpark. So I, maybe that softball game can be made in time. Let's go to the fifth inning. That angered Mr. Williams a little bit. Just a he bit. He heard, heard that. What are some hitters? And Lee proved them right, proved himself right in that series, as I recall. There's a strike to Canonis. I think if they have it aboard ship, it probably is fast pitch. <laughs> be a fast oh. game, because they got a chance to run it out of softball. I know that. That's right. <laughs> Even if they use floaters. <laughs> yeah, you see slow pitch in the middle of a, duck, a deck somewhere. You're going to have fish diving for softballs all over the Atlantic, Caribbean. Griffin, medium deep at shortstop. He comes charging for this one, but gives way to the second baseman, Phillips. And Canonis is out. Ray grounded out that way to the second baseman, Phillips, in the third inning. So there's one down in the fifth. Lachelle Tarver is the batter. Tarver grounded to Bakhti, the first baseman, in the third inning. Red Sox are trailing three to two. Big two-run homer by Rich Gedman got them back in the game after Oakland had scored three off Seaver in the first inning. Lansford close at third, and Tarver bluffs the bunt. Foul tips it. One strike. In that San Diego-Chicago game at Wrigley, McCullers pitching for the Padres, and Lynch going for the Cubs. Cubs lead it one to nothing after one inning of play. The only other afternoon game going. Slapped foul by Tarver. Michelle Tarver. A lot of friends and family in this area. He lives about an hour, an hour and a half from here originally. And a swinging strike. Andohar just blows it by him. Up and in for a strikeout. His first. To the left-handed batter. Dropping down and firing that ball. It didn't really tail back in. It just burrowed in on Lachelle. And he was tied up by it. Had nothing to do but swing and hope he made some sort of foul contact, which he did not. Strikeout number one for Andohar. Two down in the Red Sox fifth inning. Marty Barrett is up. Barrett one for two. Barrett grounded out his first time and he singled to left field in the third. Strike one to him. And that takes up high for a ball. One ball, one strike. Lifts it high to the right side, and Tony Phillips calling gives way now to Davis. Mike Davis, the right fielder, with a catch in very shallow right, uh, just off the skin part of the infield, actually. One, two, three inning for Andujar. We go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Oakland leading three to two. Oakland A's up against Tom Seaver in the fifth inning. Athletics leading three to two. Alfredo Griffin will be first up, and then the top of the order, Phillips and Murphy. Seaver, after a rocky first inning, has settled down very nicely and has retired the last nine men to face him. Last man to get on was Jerry Willard with an opening walk in the second inning. Griffin sacrificed in the second. Off-speed pitch for ball one. Griffin from the left side against the Seaver. Lifts it toward left and coming over is Baylor toward the line. Don Baylor with the catch. There's one out. Right, 
Baylor getting back to getting used to left field after having not played the outfield for a whole full season last year he didn't play it in the outfield at all for the Yankees played a few games in 1984 in right and left field four game total and that's now because of the injury to Jim Rice he has been put in there in Seattle and here Phillips takes a strike Tony Phillips has grounded to second and lined to right field There is a good slow curveball for Seaver. Good changeup curve. Right on that inner edge. Something you can't do anything about it. Just say, say, well, I hope it's a ball. But it wasn't. Dropped over right on that inside corner. And the count is nothing and two to Phillips. Off speed again. Down to Barrett. And Marty throws Phillips out. Two down. To go quickly in the fifth. Dwayne Murphy coming in. Walked and scored in the first inning. Fly to right field in the second. Red Sox after tomorrow afternoon's game. Head for Anaheim. An off day Thursday. Then a weekend series with the Angels. Toronto Blue Jays come in here to play the A's. And then they have the Angels coming in. So the Athletics have some nice home dates coming up. There's the breaking ball by Seaver. Count on Murphy. One ball, one strike. Two and one. Two outs in the fifth inning. Oakland leading three to two. Puts a little bit more on that one for a strike. Two balls, two strikes. And he got him. Tom Sieber registers his first strikeout. And that's a one, two, three inning again. Three, six, nine, twelve in a row. And after five innings of play, Oakland leads three to two. Tomorrow afternoon, the Sox take on these A's right here in Oakland for the finale of this three-game series. And we'll have all the action for you right here on Nesson. Hal Nipper will be on the mound for the Red Sox. He'll be opposed by the Oakland A's, Dave Stewart. So you can join Sean McDonough for a complete Major League update on Red Sox Digest, which will be on at 3, and then watch Red Sox Baseball right after Red Sox Digest at 3.15. It'll be the Sox and the A's live from Oakland, 3.15 tomorrow afternoon on Nesson, where we deliver. In the sixth inning, the Red Sox trailing by a run will have Boggs, Buckner, and Baylor up against Andujar. Wade is grounded out twice, once to the pitcher, once to second. And Andohar is going to victimize him again, that time with a pretty good play and a reaction off to the third base side. Boggs is out for the third time. Like Wade finally got a ball that he could reach or extend on and get a little power behind, but Andohar had other ideas. Well, it looked like a third baseman coming up over the top of that throw. Gave strong Boxy man. a little breathing room on that throw. A little farther away from him than he was earlier on Boggs in the first inning. Here's Buckner, who has doubled and flied to center. His double went over the center fielder Murphy's head at the base of the wall in uh, center field at 400 feet. Ball one. Off 
off speed by Underhar for a strike. One and one to Buckner. Oakland leading three to two. The game dominated right now by two veteran pitchers who go quietly about their business of professional pitching. Buckner goes toward left center this time. Canseco over. Puts it away for the second out. Two down in the sixth. Red Sox are out hitting the A's four to three. Of course, their biggest hit was the two-run homer by Richie Gedman in the fourth to get them on the board. Here's Don Baylor. Ball one. Baylor grounded to shortstop in the first and poked a single to right field in the fourth. He rode home ahead of the Gedman homer. Two balls, no strikes. <laughs> Pop up, shortstop way, Griffin. Alfredo Griffin with a catch, a one, two, three inning for Andujar, and he's retired seven in a row since giving up the home run to Gedman. After five and one half, Oakland three, Boston two. Tom Seaver will face Conseco, Bakhti, and Kingman in the bottom of the sixth inning. Oakland leading the Red Sox three to two. Seaver, after the first inning trouble and a walk in the second, has retired 12 batters in a row. Canseco has popped a short and thrown out by Seaver as he tried to bunt his way on in the third inning. No hits in his last 17 times at bat now. Strike on the outside corner. Speed pitch by Seaver that time had Jose way out in front. No balls, two strikes. One ball, two strikes now. Canseco's average at this point is 263. Field, Dwight Evans. And Conseco is 0 for 3. One down in the Oakland sixth inning. The sky, which was almost perfectly clear when we came out here, is clouded over in the early afternoon hours. Sun no longer out. Ball one to Bakhti. Bruce Bakhti has singled in two times up. He singled the left in the first inning and scored a run. Rips it into right field. Base hit down into the corner. Evans digs it out. Bakhti to second. He's got a double. Bruce Bakhti two for three. So he has singled the left and doubled the right. Throughout his career here, Botke has never tried to do anything with a ball that he couldn't do. His first time up, the ball was away from him. He shot it out to left field. This time, Seaver goes with a breaking ball, trying to get it in on him. And Botke just clears it out of there, hits it just inside the line down the right field way. And he'll slide for a double. Runner at second base, one out. 
Seaver had retired 13 in a row up till then. Dave Kingman is the batter. Kingman singled home two runs in the first inning and later scored. And he grounded to Boggs in the third. Ball one. Oakland leading three to two. Seaver trying to keep it that way. Left side, shortstop way. Canonis stretched by Stenhouse. Two down. Bakhti holding at second, and with two gone, the batter will be Carney Lansford. Very tough man to face in this situation. Very good two out hitter. Very good two strike hitter. Lansford doubled home a run in the first and grounded to third base in the fourth. Strike one from Sieber. Each team has four hits now. Even though there's a left-handed hitter on deck and Mike Davis, I would think this would be a time here where Seaver would make Lansford hit his pitch all the way around. If he gets a little behind him, still wouldn't give in to him. It's the third foul. Now it's a different story. The obligation has changed. You have to bit. get him out now. And as you mentioned, a very good two-strike hitter. You kind of wonder who's played into whose hands at, yeah. at this time at bat. Yeah, it's like Boggs on the other side. That's right. Nothing in two to Carney Lansford. And a one ball, two strike count. Two out, Bakhti at second. Just missing for ball two. Two and two. Fastball just to miss outside, and now a full count to Lansford, who's worked it that way after going 0 and 2. Three balls, two strikes. Well, maybe Seaver won't get caught in that trap either. He <laughs> no, he's sharp. He's been around the grounds a bit. He's worked just off the plate and in spots. It goes to short and Canonis dug out again on the backhand by Stenhouse, and that's all for the Oakland half threat in the sixth inning. They leave one. And after six innings of play, Oakland leads three to two. <laughs> Through six innings here, it is Oakland three runs, four hits, one error. The Red Sox two runs, four hits, and one error. And that just about indicates the way this game has gone. Oakland got three runs in the first inning, and Seaver's been awfully tough ever since. The Red Sox got their two runs on a home run by Gedman with a man. And it's gone along with uh, great dispatch here, Marty. And uh, it could be a short one, or it could be a very long one if the Red Sox could tie it up. <laughs> they could, and they like that guy's umbrella. Oh, that was a dandy. <laughs> Some kind of model of a hat. Some type couldn't see the logo on it though. It wasn't green, so I don't think it was an Oakland hat, although it could have been. Evans, Gedman, and Stenhouse here to face the 33-year-old Joaquin Andahar. Andahar brushes Evans back with that first pitch. During the day, 0 for 2. He and Alfredo Griffin have been quite a pair. There's the breaking ball over from Joaquin. One and one to Dwight. Andahar gave the Red Sox just five hits in his first win against them in Boston. They've had just four hits against him here this afternoon. Of course, the two-run homer by Gedwin, counting for the Red Sox runs. The 
American League against Andahar hits just 197 against them. Certainly the Red Sox have not put many dents in that. Low into the dirt. Imagine what Andahar could have done. His record is really something on grass. Of course, this ballpark here, the infield's a little bit slower, certainly slower than what Andohar is accustomed to working in St. Louis and in the National League. Those 41 wins, I told you, the last couple of years, 46 over the three seasons. Andohar has been. And Alfredo has it go off of his glove at short. He had Evans all wired in again, and that ball somehow just eluded the A's shortstop. And the Red Sox have the leadoff man on in the seventh. How about that? That's something you rarely see. Well, Evans has been playing pepper with him all afternoon. He's been putting him out on good plays last night, and here, this one hit hard. That was the main thing. It hit hard and took that roll, and, and uh, he could not catch up with it, Griffin, at shortstop. Alfredo will be charged with the error, allowing Evans to reach. Here's Getty. Tailing fastball outside corner. Well, is a hit. Excuse me. Yeah. It is a hit indeed. Gedman went for something a little off speed down and in. And he's down in the count. No balls, two strikes. So erase the error on Griffin. You credit Evans with a base hit. Fifth hit for Boston. To the right side, Bakhti. Griffin. And Andohar on the back side. They'll get the double play. And I wonder if Andohar either got spiked or could he have aggravated that hamstring pull. At any rate, it goes 3 6 1 on the double play. Ball hit sharply by Gedman. And that, of course, turned it into the double play easily as Bakhti was right there on the grass to start the play. Gets it here. Griffin's return throw to Andujar. There, he got the inside of the bag. Lane, the only way he could have hurt it maybe was to jam it or, or hurt the leg, the hamstring leg. It didn't look as if he'd gotten tangled up over there at all. Tony LaRusso is going to check on him quickly. A noticeable limp, though, after he cleared himself from the bag, and certainly he got the inside part of the bag to avoid the spike. I'm not sure which angle he hurt in his comeback. He was going under some simulated uh, game conditions. It was his left ankle that was hurt. He seemed to be favoring the right one, the one that hit the bag with. So apparently he's all right. Seems to be all right, according to Larusa. Here it comes again. He's got the inside bag, then gets the foot off in a hurry. Seems to limp right there. So at any rate, the hit is erased quickly by that 3-6-1 double play. The bases are empty for Stenhouse. And to Harlow with that one, ball one. Mike on the day 0 for 2. He's been in the outfield twice, fairly deep his first time in the left field. Lays off the high pitch. And to Har, as I was mentioning before, working on grass. 19 and 4. You think he doesn't take advantage of throwing up some ground balls and sinkers? 2 and 0 to Stenhouse. Off speed. Now 3 and 0. Mike was saying after the game last night, I would like to get on some other way besides the walk. He said, I'd like, like to help the team out, but. Those bases would feel nice. Well, I don't know. I don't think he'll want to give that one back to him, but he'll have something to talk about again. Yet another walk for the Red Sox first baseman today. He's going to get his chances to play, I think, more and more in this second half. They're going to need to give Buckner a little more time off. And somewhere along the line, they're going to need a Stenhouse-type bat in, in there anyway on occasion. 
Gotta like the way he swings the bat, too. He's, come, he's certainly been to the warning track a couple of times when he's been given the opportunity. Shortstop Ray Canone is up. Plays off the end to our pitch there, and it's 0-1. Joaquin has... Well, he's just been kind of tough all day today. He hasn't given the Red Sox an awful lot to work on. That is the first walk that our Andohar has issued. Never been known as a strikeout pitcher throughout his career. I think his career high was something like 140, 147. 147 in 1984. That includes minor leagues and every place else. One ball, one strike to Canonis. <laughs> Tip your hat with that one. Red Sox trailing three to two as we play in the top of the seventh inning. Two down. Stenhouse at first. for the Boston seventh they have a couple of base runners one of them on a hit it was erased in the double play so they leave just one do not score in the seventh then after six and a half and and the A's lead Boston three to two as a group the success of your game at Fenway Park will be enhanced by the pitcher's mound that's the exclusive function room at Fenway Park. The in-house catering service provides a variety of food and beverage packages to accommodate a wide range of budgets and appetites. There are a limited number of dates available for the months of August, September, and early October, so book your date now by calling 262-1915 between 9 and 5, Monday through Friday. Come to the West Coast. Red Sox fans are here nonetheless. Quite a few of them in this ballpark last night rooting for Boston. Most of the heroics, though, performed by the A's. In the seventh inning, it'll be Davis, Willard, and Griffin, the schedule hitters. A little two shot roll foul. Seaver today just a smidgen over his career earned run average for those 308 wins. A 2.84 career and run average. It's almost kind of unbelievable when you think about as many wins and games as Seaver has started that that earn run average would be under three. And all that time losing less than 200 games, just 199. Davis 0 for 2. Actually, Seaver was born, uh, he grew up in Southern California, I believe. He was born about 180 miles from here in the Bay Area in Fresno, California. They tell me it gets a little warm around Fresno. <laughs> Do that. <laughs> <laughs> Inland in the valley there. A little warmer than it is here today. Reached for and foul out of play, left field way. The count will hold one ball, two strikes to the A's right fielder. He's bounced out to Barrett, bounced out to the right side with Seaver covering in the first and in the fourth inning. Reached for again. Canone is to his left. He'll have to hurry. Not in time. It just looked as if that blow all working to the right field side was not going to get Davis, and it didn't. The nice play by Canonas. He had to reach out. The batter Davis did, and Ray got over there, made that quick, strong throw. He knew he had to put something else on it. Just not enough, and Davis has an infield hit. Good flip, strong throw. Well, when you talk about inches, you could certainly put that play in your book. Davis really hoofing it down that line, so... He'll be on as the leadoff man for the A's here in the seventh inning. That is the fifth hit. Seaver has given up. Both teams with five hits. 
Red Sox trailing three to two. Here's a catcher, Willard. Boggs in close. That little toss over to first, maybe to find out if Willard was or was not Bunny. Strike over. Willard didn't make, leave any doubt to anybody that time. He squared around well before Seaver was ready to come to the plate, even while Seaver was in the set position. Willard on the day, 0 for 1. game going on now between the pitcher runner no bun attempt that time that was a check swing strike and Willard is down to the count no balls and two strikes was it on the pitch he said or was it on the swing whatever it was it was a real tie-up job inside on this pitch by Seaver This is the spot here that he often goes to that pitch that really runs away from the left-hander, whether it be the change-up type or the hard runner. So Gedman setting up, too. When you watch Seaver throughout his career, of course, highlights would be the only thing we would have been able to see very much of. Him spending most of his time in the National League. There's a little runner, gets off the plate outside, one and two. I found it kind of interesting as quizzing him uh, the other day about that particular pitch because I had not noticed him throwing it that much in the past. Thought it was something that maybe he had come up with in the last couple of years to make up for some of the uh, loss in velocity. He said, no, actually, he said, when I started as a pitcher in the minor leagues, he said, I was a hard sinker ball type pitcher. He said, I became a high riding type pitcher after I got to the big leagues and was working with the Mets. So he's always had that one. But if you would jog your memory a bit and, and you think about highlights that you see of Seaver, you mostly remember him as and see him as a high riding type pitcher, hard slider. Although he could be right around those knees anytime he wanted to be. For a number of years, he could do anything he wanted. You're not kidding. Boy. Year in and year out, such consistency. He knew every little nook and cranny in that strike zone and knew how to get there. In the center field, base hit for Willard. And the throw to third, not in time. Boy, Davis was in high gear. He had his mind made up as soon as that ball got past an infielder that he was going to third, and it worked for him. Ball belted into center field. Good pitch to hit by Willard. Had some extension on the arms. Davis headed for third. Little hesitation by Tarver. Then head, headed toward just over the cutoff man to Boggs. Too late. Runners at first and third. Bob Stanley hurries to get loose in that Red Sox bullpen now. So the runners will be at the corners. Nobody out in the open seventh inning. They're up by a run. Red Sox infield has to come in tight. Way inside to Alfredo. Mac really doesn't have an option here with Andohar on the, on the mound in the way he has been pitching today. You cannot afford to give him yet another run. With Alfredo Griffin at the plate, you're not apt to double him up. Even if you could give them the other run, you probably would have to keep the inning alive. Low and inside once again, and again hard to an O. Barrett was out mention, uh, motioning for Tarver to come in a little bit in center field. Michelle is a little deep with Griffin up there. Reached for a little chinker to third. Boggs has it in foul ground. Boy, was that ever close. 
All Boggs would have been able to do with that one is put it in his pocket. Davis streaking toward the plate and the ball just along the line reached for by Alfredo Boggs takes it right there outside the line and it's a foul ball otherwise it's a run because of his being off balance he wouldn't have had anything to do with it Davis right. would have scored and Griffin just kept right on running and talked to Evans if he wanted to before Boggs could have gotten rid of it. So it's a two and one count now to Alfredo. He would be conscious, of course, of putting that ball in play to the opposite side in the outfield. Carver with not a strong throwing arm, nor does Baylor have one and left. <laughs> Pulls this one foul. So Seaver's back even in the count with the little shortstop. Two balls, two strikes. Seaver struck out but one today. He's looking for number two definitely right here. And that's not a very easy order either. Alfredo struck out just 25 times all year. That in well over 300 at bats now. Just a piece of it. This is where the game really gets to be something. The one-on-one -on -one right here, the matchup, Davis over at third. Jerry Willard, the runner at first, nobody down. <laughs> that was like a replay of the last pitch. Exactly. Oh, the same spot, same results. checking up and down that lineup anybody that he may be involved in making some moves with a little more interested and in what now Lawler has joined Stanley in that bullpen two and two to Alfredo Griffin to the right side this time punch foul Alfredo addition to this Oakland ball club last year was just an instant success. Popped him up very shallow into left field. Baylor underneath getting set. Here comes Davis up the line. The throw not in time. And the A's have the extra run. It's 4-2 now in the bottom of the seventh. So Alfredo with a good at bat there gets the job done on the sacrifice fly. He's driven in his 29th run of the year. Good and bad indeed. Foul balls all over the place till so they got a pitch he could drive someplace. He got it into medium shallow left, but uh, Baylor's arm, they run on Baylor's arm, and you knew that it, Davis was going to, and he beat it rather handily. Tony Phillips in now with a pitch low and inside on him with all that going on of course Willard held his ground at first one down now the double play set in order but then that's not likely either with Phillips running Oakland four, Boston two. a man out a man on just off the outside edge one and one to Phillips Phillips on the day 0 for 3. He bounced out to Barrett twice. He's been on a fly ball to right. <laughs> Awfully big cut there and fouls it away. <laughs> Outfield shaded around the left. For Phillips, big gap for him right at the 375 mark in right center. There goes the runner, a little chopper down the third base line, foul. So will Earl have to backtrack, so will Phillips. Good time for a runner to pick up signs. 
mainly because there are not a lot of times that anybody would be watching that third base coach. Runner Mo Mosing back to first. Easy for him to get him. Strike three. They get Phillips. The breaking ball grabs the back door. And that is strikeout number two for Seaver and out number two here in the seventh. Well, it might have been a batter late at this point, but he got the strikeout that he needed anyway. Good pitch on the outer edge. No argument on the part of Phillips. And now they're two down. And free swinger, very free swinger, Dwayne Murphy stepping in. He's 0 for 2 with a walk today. Scored a run in that three run open first. On the check swing, it was low, ball one. Seaver very thorough in his getting into the seventh inning, certainly as far as the Red Sox are concerned. Seventh time in his last nine games now, Seaver has worked into the seventh inning, and 10 of his 17 starts, 10 times in his 17 starts, he's gone into the seventh. Trouble here with Murphy, though. Three balls, no strikes to count. Seaver trailing the Oakland A's four to two. Seaver only worked into the seventh inning or through the seventh inning the first two starts for Mack. A lot of pitches in that first effort for Seaver against Toronto when he beat them. Nine to seven. That pitch is too high to Murphy, and he has the walk. And John McNamara is going to make the walk himself from the Red Sox dugout. Got Conseco coming up, whom they have handled very well so far in the series, but you know it's Conseco, and a mistake can make it a, an out of sight ball game. Sometimes the manager gets caught a little bit in between. You, you, he's talking to Seaver here. The way that Seaver has handled Conseco this afternoon, he has him 0 for 3 right now, although one of those was a bunt attempt. Nevertheless, Seaver couldn't talk him into it or out of it one way or the other. Max going to make the pitching change and go for the strong arm of Bob Stanley here in the seventh inning with a run in. And runners at first and second, two down. Well, they're making the change now. Nice hand for Tom Seaver, who did a good job out there. After that first inning problem, he really shut the door until they scored here in the seventh. Stanley coming on for the first time since Sunday in Seattle, when in two-thirds of an inning, he gave, he gave up no hits or runs. Against Oakland, in his uh, dealings with them this year, he's beaten them once and had two saves against them. 11-4 and four lifetime with 13 saves. Stanley making his 43rd relief appearance. He's won five and lost three with a 4.05 earned run average. He has 14 saves. 53 and a third innings worked. He has given up 64 hits, 24 earned runs, 15 walks, 37 strikeouts, and has given up seven homers. And the man he faces first will be Jose Canseco. Stanley is tied for fifth in the American League and saves with those 14 and also with games appeared in 42 until right now is 43rd. Still trying to pick up that 100th win. Seaver with a little acknowledgement maybe from a McNamara comment six and two thirds innings of work for Seaver six hits. Four runs charged with four runs responsible for two runners and Seiko against Stanley. The steamer powers it in there 0 and 1 to the big right hander. Seaver walked three struck out two and had a wild pitch at the time Had wild pitch a fairly big one in that first inning. Strike two on Conseco. That breaking ball really swept across almost the width of the plate.
Canseco with a word for Hirschback behind that play. I'm not so sure he didn't deserve it. They run that sinker in on Canseco again. He fouls it away. Count holes. No balls. Two strikes. to the breaking ball two times in that sequence Canseco gone on the strikes but the A's do damage an insurance run for them here in the bottom of the seventh inning to get that run on two hits they leave a couple and at the end of seven full innings of play it's Oakland four and Boston two. Once again, tomorrow afternoon, these Red Sox and the A's will go head-to-head -head here in Oakland, California. Finale of this three-game series. We'll have it for you for all the action right here on Nesson. Al Nipper will be working for the Red Sox. He'll be opposed by the Oakland A's, Dave Stewart. You can join Sean McDonough for a complete Major League update on Red Sox Digest that comes your way at 3 o'clock. Then stay tuned for great baseball action at 3.15 as the Sox and the A's will head up once again live from Oakland. That's on Nesson where we deliver. That's the idea of these afternoon games here, or some of the idea of the afternoon games here in Oakland as we go to the eighth inning. Kind of time, fun for the family to get together and almost make uh, an enjoyable picnic out of it. Dance around the ballpark, have a little fun. They do a lot of modern type things in this ballpark, really. Jazzy music. Yeah. Before, during the ball game. A lot of highlights from other big league games uh, that take place in the past week or the past couple of days. Lots of room to move around too on a crowd like this at 14,410. There are some seats and some spaces to roam in for the kids. And I'm quite sure they do. Red Sox are down by two as they come up in the eighth inning. And Lachelle Tarver is first up against Andujar. Tarver has grounded to first and struck out. Lansford on the grass at third. Strike one. And Lachelle belts one to left center for a base hit. Line drive. Takes the turn. The ball bobbled a little bit by Murphy, but not enough for an extra base so Tarver leads with a single in the eighth. Well a little bit up to Tarver is it? Yes sir. Just slaps her right in the left field on a screaming liner. Well, those outfielders again play so very shallow they they don't take long or the ball doesn't take long to get to them. It just doesn't have that far to travel to get to them. You hit it that hard it's they're almost right on top of it. Marty Barrett is the batter. Tarver with some speed at first base. Barrett is one for three. He singled in the third inning. Steve Ottaveras in the bullpen. The right-hander starting along with Von Olin, the left-hander for Oakland. So they've got right and left activity down there. Von Olin, far side. Ottaveras, who had been the main guy with Howell out in your bullpen. Now Jay Howell is back. Barrett is grounded out, singled, and fly to right. Tarver just back, turned and dug in. Four runs, six hits, one error for the A's. Two runs, six hits, and one error for the Red Sox. Andujar has been down around the shoes most of the afternoon. 11 ground balls for 12 outs. One double play ball there. Ball gets away. And Tarver down into scoring position. Ball getting by the catcher, Willard. 
like it hit off the, the thick part of the facing of the glove and just simply got away from him. Got a little piece of the dirt, but no effort at all to go block that ball. He's just trying to catch it. Trying to snap to, the glove. Tough to catch when it bounces like that. They charge a wild pitch to Andohar. Tarver at second now. And a one ball, one strike count to Barrett. On the inner edge. One and two to Marty. Tough pitch by Andujar. There's a catcher. You don't take anything for granted. You have to kind of expect a lot of pitches to be bad ones, and that enables you to anticipate enough to be able to block them. A lot of balls are tough to block. A lot of balls, sometimes when you block one, you're lucky when you block them. That is not one of them. That is an easy ball to block. That the Oakland A's catch a let get by him right there. That's something you put a little mark by and say, you shouldn't let that happen. Now, if that ball bounces out way to my right, maybe hits in one of those holes, and you stop it, you pat yourself on the back. If it goes by, you say, wow, should have had it, maybe. But you can't let the easy balls get by you. Those are the costly ones. The ones that are, that are true wild pitches, they're wild pitches. When you stop them, you've done a good job. Those easy ones, you've got to stop those. You have to keep the ball in front of you. And it actually probably could have been scored a pass ball, couldn't it? Well, I, technically, I, I don't know if you could. I guess how the rule goes, because the ball did hit in the dirt. Yeah. It's a question of where it hit in the dirt. Was it past the plate or up even? It looked like it was past it to me. Sometimes catchers can handle balls that are thrown off. They just simply take the mitt and move it up a little bit, catch that ball a little farther up. Barrett sends one high to center field to Murphy. One out. Bluffed by Tarver, a strike by Murphy almost to third base. There's one down and Tarver at second. Red Sox down four to two, and they're trying to do something about that situation here in the eighth Wait, inning. With Michelle Tarver at second and one down, and Boggs coming up. Andujar has handled Wade Boggs very well this afternoon. Two ground balls right to the mound and one to second base. Now La Russa coming out. Tight ball game situation. A two run lead here with Boggs and Buckner back to back coming up. We don't know the pitch count and I'm, I'm sure that that would be a concern. Both those fellas right handed left handed are ready down there. They've been throwing well along enough. La Russa would be interested of course in the legs of Andy Hart. I'm ta talking about the injury part of the legs. I'm talking about just how strong are your legs. He yeah. hasn't been in competition. Only his second start since coming back from the disabled list. Still seems to have enough velocity and the movement of course is always there with him. So he faces Boggs with one out. Strike one. Flog the fastball through. You know, I'll give you a few different looks. He'll give you a big high kick one time, kind of a tight wind up another. The arm drops down, of course, to a three different locations. Just goes inside a little bit too much for Wade, and the count is one ball, one strike. Well, for a long time, all the pitchers that came out of the Dominican Republic, because of Marshall, they all had that big high kick. He, Marshall, understandably, they're idle. Sure. They all wanted to, to look like him. If a high kick got him to the big leagues, maybe it'll help me. Boggs takes strike two. So now Andohar is one and two with Boggs. Just like I'm sure there are a lot of kids around America who have watched Boggs hit over the years, one way or the other. Try to do the same thing. Maybe employ that inside-out swing if they can. Concentrate on making a lot of kids in high school at one and two very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Taking two strikes. Boggs looks low. Ball two. Two and two. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Hey, you know, when you're a kid and you played, you all, there was always somebody you, you either wanted to bat like. Yeah. Or if you were in the field, you wanted to make the flip throws or uh, go to your right or your left one way like someone else did it. 
especially pitchers. And pitchers would be the ones that, of course, are always in the center of attraction and maybe a little easier to copy. Boggs spikes it foul to the left side, and the count remains two and two. Like the only person you ever wanted to be like as a kid would be you didn't want to copy any catchers because nobody wanted to be one. <laughs> who did you uh, who did you like when you were coming up? I liked them all. I mean, did you, who did you did you uh, anybody particular as your kid that you patterned yourself after? Oh yeah, everybody wanted to be uh, Mickey Mantle when you went to hit. Just hit one sided though. <laughs> Boggs has run the count full three and two. I was around a lot of double A baseball players growing up in Nashville and some pretty good ball players. Uh, Tommy Brown used to play with the, the old Brooklyn Dodgers. Guys later, some players who later went on and became very good players in the big leagues. Jim O'Toole with Cincinnati Reds, Jim Maloney. Yeah. The pitchers. Those guys, you bet, hard throwers. John Edwards was the catcher there in Nashville for a while. Fog spoils one, fouling it back. The count remains three and two. New York Yankees during my growing up days belonged to CBS and that was the only game you saw on Saturday afternoon. Uh, if you watch baseball that was it and of course uh, the CBS network was who else were they going to carry beside the Yankees and whoever else they were playing. That's right. You always saw the Yankees and it, and a sundry of other teams who you didn't recognize from uh, one month to the next hardly. Because you always knew Yogi. You always knew Hector Lopez. Hector Lopez was a guy that always I like the way he played because he could play two or three different places and seem to get the job done no matter where he plays. Boggs takes the walk. So now the Red Sox have runners at first and second with one away. Second walk given up by Andujar. And that's going to be all for Joaquin as the long walk out there by La Russa means that Andohar will be gone and the left-hander Von Olin is coming on. So Joaquin Andohar and a good job this afternoon again for the second time against the Red Sox gets into the eighth inning goes seven and one third and it gives up six hits and two runs. He's responsible for two runners. Both the runs are earned. He walked two. He struck out two. And he had a wild pitch. Gets a nice hand from the Oakland fans. And waves to them with his hat. And he's through for the afternoon and a job well done. Leaves it over to Von Olin to try to nail it down for him. And to Hart acknowledging the applause he received from these fans here. And I certainly, I know LaRusse is happy with that effort. There's no reason in the world that Andohar wouldn't be. Stands to pick up his sixth win, of course. Dave Von Olin on now for the A's. This will be his fifth appearance. His record just about covered up with zeros. No wins, no losses. He has no saves. Four hits given up and only three and two-thirds innings of work. He's walked three, struck out three, and there are zeros everywhere else. He has not given up a run in any of those outings. So Tony La Russa thinking one thing right here. Let me go left-hander against left-hander. And my two run lead I hope can be somewhat safe in that area try to use the advantage of the left hander against a Buckner to certainly keep the ball in the ballpark although Andohar seemed to be pr still pretty strong a little hard to tell when he walked uh, the only two walks he gave up one in the seventh one in the eighth certainly he was in command uh, pretty much throughout this ball game he made that ball do about what he wanted to and when he wanted to do it except for that two run homer by Rich Gedman back in the fourth inning about the only mistake he's made really and uh, Getty took advantage of it and lost it but Von Olin now to face Buckner and out of ready down there in case he is being brought in to face Baylor and Evans if that's the way LaRusso wants to operate. The tying run is at first base for the Red Sox. They're in the eighth inning. One out. Runners at first and second. Von Olin has worked two thirds of an inning against the Red Sox. He faced Buckner. And Buckner had a bunt into a double play. That was a thing that uh, disgusted Buckner with himself. He was given the bunt to try to get the runners over. 
and dumped one down right in front to the plate and is thrown out. And the play was made at third by the catcher and then over to first to get Buckner to a race two. That was at Fenway. Nothing in one. And the curve ball for ball one. One ball, one strike. Tarver is at second. Boggs at first. One out. Von Olin, 27 years old. 6'2", 200 pounder. And some arm problems last year. And the curveball is hit high in the air into shallow right center field. Three players over. Davis gives way to Murphy. Dwayne Murphy at the last moment making the catch. And Buckner is out. So there are two down now. As Von Olin gets Buckner and here comes La Russa again. The batter will be Don Baylor. And they're going to bring Steve Onaveras right on now. As Von Olin does his job. Gets the left-handed hitting Buckner out. And will leave. And Onaveras will come on to face Don Baylor. So Onaveras, the new pitcher, and Von Olin getting the hand as he gets the left-hander out. Which is what uh, the Red Sox have been doing most of this season with Joe Sambito. So now it is Onaveras on for the par purpose of getting Don Baylor out. Onaveras one and two on the year, appearance number 40. Of course, he's been busy with the absence of Jay Howell. Nine saves Anto has been credited with, a 4.59 earned run average, 22 base on balls, 50 strikeouts, nine home runs given up, one of them a home run to Don Baylor here on a Saturday afternoon when the Red Sox were in Oakland first. And of course, that was in an extra inning ball game, but you have to remember that La Russa wasn't here. He didn't see it. Probably doesn't even know about it. Probably could care less. It's a different situation all the way around. And certainly a more rested on Tavares we're seeing this afternoon than we saw then. In that particular appearance, on Tavares had made something like four appearances in about five days and needed some time off. That was just after the A's had lost the services of Jay Howell. They didn't have any, uh, Jackie Moore at that time didn't have any choice but to try to use Onaveros as much as he could to try to become a stopper. So Oakland Ball Club had one stretch this year, lost 28 out of 35. So that gives you the idea of what those short people out of that bullpen, and I'm talking about short relievers, can do out of that bullpen for you to help save some of that action. More than half of the A's losses this year, 57 of them, or actually more than half of the 57 losses they have, have been by two runs or less. So now how important can a short, the absence of a short man show up on your ball club? Certainly, uh, you figure a third of those maybe would have, if he kept you in the ball game, maybe turned into wins. A lot of Eris has really worked hard, as you mentioned. Uh, he was going kind of middle to long, not long, but middle to uh, short sometimes. A wave by Baylor for a strike. Don Baylor in this one has one hit in three times, a single in the fourth inning, and he scored a run. Trying to pick up the runner or runners at first and second. Fouls it back and quickly falls behind on Averis. Nothing in two. Baylor grounded to shortstop in the first inning, got the single in the fourth, and popped to shortstop in the sixth. It's a one ball, two strike count to Don. Oakland leading four to two, two outs in the eighth inning and two on for Boston. Struck him out. So La Russa pulls the right strings in the eighth inning and gets the right pitchers in for the right batters and gets out of trouble. 
The Red Sox leave two, and after seven and a half, it is four to two, Oakland. Bruce Bakke first up against Bob Stanley. Bottom of the eighth inning. Oakland leading four to two. Bakti has singled and doubled in three trips. Single to left and double to right. And a strike. Stanley came on to relieve Seaver with two out and a couple on in the seventh inning. One run in and struck out the one man he faced, Jose Canseco. Pop up. Right side of the infield, Stenhouse and Barrett. Barrett calls Mike off and makes the grab. So Bakhti's down. There's one out in the eighth. Dave Kingman up. Had a very important single back in the first inning when Oakland got three of its four runs. He singled home two runs with two out, and at that time, a very big hit. Still is. Down quickly to Boggs. One knee. Kingman's gone. Three times subsequently is grounded twice to Boggs and once to Canonis. It's one of those times I'm sure when Kingman hits the ball this hard he likes to just stand at the plate. He knows he's got no chance. Boggs with just all kinds of time. Yeah, there's Kingman. Carney Lansford taking a strike from Stanley. Jay Howell just back off the disabled list and ready to throw it. Is warming in the bullpen now for Oakland. Fly ball, right field. Dwight Evans has it. And a 1 2 3 inning for Stanley. We go to the top of the ninth inning and last call for the Red Sox with a score Oakland 4 and Boston 2. It's the top of the ninth inning. The Red Sox trail by a pair of runs. Trying to get back in this thing against Onaveras. Evans, Gedman, and Stenhouse will be the hitters. Red Sox got their two runs on the two-run homer by Rich Gedman in the fourth inning. Stopped pretty well by Andujar and then the tandem relief in the eighth inning worked perfectly. Von Olin against Buckner got him, and Anaveras got Baylor. Dwight Evans. Evans, one for three, single to left field in the seventh. Off the glove, it was actually, it was off the glove of Griffin. A funny hop out into left field. The pitch is low and away to Dwight for a ball. Left-hander Dave Leeper has joined Howell in the bullpen for Oakland. Snaps a strike over. One ball, one strike to Dwight. There's Leeper, the left-hander. Howell. Fly ball, right center field, and calling for it, Mike Davis. The right fielder puts it away. One out. This game has breezed right along this afternoon. Starting a little after 3.15, or, well, 12.15 Oakland time. It's not quite quarter to three yet. Gedman, a two-run homer in the fourth. One for three. He's hit into a double play, and he's lined to center. Foul ball. This ballpark, a scene of many, many late-inning histrionics by each team. Of course, Oakland has done it a lot of times. Pulled the button game out. But the Red Sox also have come back here and sent games into extra innings. There have been some very interesting contests here in this ballpark. 
Gedman slowly to short. Griffin throws him out. They're two away. So if they're going to do any histrionics now, it better be done immediately, started by Mike Stenhouse. Because the Red Sox are down to their last out. Stenhouse has flied to left, flied deep to center, and walked. One ball, no strikes to Mike. Canonis on deck. And that's the fastball on the outside corner. One and one. Tomorrow afternoon, Al Nipper against Dave Stewart in the last game of this series. And the final appearance of the Red Sox here in Oakland this year. Two balls, one strike. So strike two, Dipping's pitch away from him. Now it's two and two, and the crowd wants the strikeout to end it. Down low for a ball. Full count to Stenhouse, three and two. That was the breaking ball. Time called. Willard wants something done. Maybe uh, get straight what he wants to do on this 3-2 pitch to Mike Stenhouse. Stenhouse has had a pretty good idea of getting the bat on the ball despite a low average. He's had all the walks. He's got the good eye. He has struck out four times. Walked ten. And digs in for the 3 2 count. Check swing, grounded to third, slowly hit. Lansford with a couple of running steps gets him with a nice strong throw. And that's all for the Red Sox in the ninth and in the ball game. Nothing across. Final score Oakland four, the Red Sox two. We'll wrap it up with our instant replay in a moment.